guys welcome back to resin bell today i have something exciting so i received an email from sophie at total boat and she asked me if i would like to try some free samples of their resins and uh see what i think about them so she sent me they sent me this big box of awesome products to try so we're going to open this up together and we'll see what all's in here. This box is completely stuffed. So really excited to try all this stuff out. It sent me lots of these awesome mixing cups. If you do resin, then you know that mixing cups are, are very handy. I've got some shorter ones and some larger ones. So that's really awesome. These will come in handy, and I do believe they're slick enough. I should be able to uh, break the resin out of them and reuse them. And then there's some more over here. So we've got some nice different sizes here. So great mixing cups. They're nice heavy-duty uh, mixing. I love the measurement on them, so they'll be nice and easy. They have the different 3-to-1 four to one they've got the different um, labels on them so that you know exactly how much you need to put in there and because different resins have different mixing and then these are really awesome they have a nice little pour spout on them so those will be pretty cool um, the graduations are on the inside but a lot of the smaller ones they are so uh, those will probably just be uh, one mix type things but very cool Love. Oh, and here we go. Got some resin. So they make this product, which is called Maker Epoxy Crystal Clear Artist Resin by Just Crow. It is a one-to-one -one mix ratio with a high gloss finish, extending work extended working time. So uh, I'm going to try this out. This is what I'm going to be using today. So really happy and really excited to try that out because you know if you're a resin artist you know um, it's not always easy to um, or financially feasible to try new resins even though you want to uh, because resins can be expensive and they um, you know you don't always have the money to spend on just trying one out you know maybe you have a business or something and you can't afford to try something you've never tried before so and then they sent me this one which is their high performance epoxy resin it's a two to one ratio clear and non-blushing low viscosity for laminating excellent flex properties so i may um, come up with a larger uh product project to use for this and uh I'm really excited to try that one too. It's so cool of them to send me two different ones. Um, they sent me a bunch of stir sticks are always handy. And then we've got some pumps for the resin, for the two to one resins. You just take the thing and you cut it down. Very cool. Love that. And it tells you which one goes to which resin for the blue and the um, red. These have a different pump ratio so that you get the correct amount. So that's pretty awesome. And then there's some handy dandy um, you know, stickers and things like that in here. So that was such a cool box to open. Thank you so much to those at Total Boat for sending me those um, samples to try. And I look forward to trying those out and letting you guys know what I think about those. Okay, so today I'm gonna to be using the Total Boat Maker Epoxy Crystal Clear Artist Resin. I'm gonna try that out for the first time. Thought, well, you know what? Um, I haven't made any coasters in a while, so I'm gonna try that. And just sitting here, I was thinking I got this new stamp and has like little herbs in little um, glass jars. Thought that was a cute stamp. And so I'm thinking about trying some stamps uh, in my resin. So I don't know, we'll see how that goes. Um, I've got two different kinds of ink and this could be a total fail. It could not work at all, but I'm gonna try it and see what happens. So I've got some stays on permanent 
black ink and then I have some pigment ink so those are two different kinds of ink so we're going to try those and see if either of them work maybe maybe neither of them will work maybe they'll both both work but I guess we'll find out um let's let's try with just these two so I'm going to try the stays on first. I think this is a pretty good ink pad. It's a generally newer ink pad. So this is a new stamp so I have to kind of scrub it on the pad a little bit just to get that rubber ready to accept some ink. It's looking pretty good so far. Nice and juicy. Now then, let's see if we can get this stamped evenly. Actually, I think I'm going to do it this way. We kind of went in there a little bit. It's not great, but it may show up in uh, it may show up better in the resin. It may just dissolve in the resin. I don't know, but we're gonna try it and see what happens. one see how this one works that one is a little fainter but it doesn't beat up like the um, like the other one so we're just going to try that and see what happens. I'm going to let those dry and we'll come back to it. All right, so I've let these dry and this one is completely dry. Nothing coming off. Doing well. That's the permanent one. And then this one is the pigment. You can see it is still wet. So that's not going to work, I don't think. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that out of there and uh, just very gently. I don't recommend you wipe the inside of your molds because it can create miniature um, scratches, but these came scratched. You can see I use these for testing out new stuff. Um, generally, you don't see that in a coaster, so it's not that big of a deal, but um, for other silica molds, please do not wipe the inside of your mold. So I think I'm just going to use this one. This one's going to be the only one that has the stamping, which is fine. Um, and then I have these two. So I've decided that I'm going to be doing some paper in resin. And I have done a couple of other videos that show you how to seal paper so that when you put it in resin, the resin doesn't soak into the paper. Now this one, I'm going to be kind of going back to my mixed media roots. Um, if you haven't checked out my other channel, Ventiquities, uh, go check it out. I do a lot of like um, scrap paper piercing piecing and junk journals and things like that so this is kind of going to be leaning on those roots um, a lot of mixed media artwork over there so um, I'm not super active on it because I have been focusing on this channel but um, I've picked out some materials and I'm going to be doing some layering of paper in the resin but I'm not going to seal it one of them I'm going to seal but I will show you that as I'm going but um, the idea is to let the resin soak into this paper so that it get, takes on a translucent uh, feel and look and you can get some fun um, uh, styles with that technique uh, if you want to play around with that. It's called resin paper. Um, you can... You can do that inside a resin. You can lay this on a silicone mat and just brush on the resin and it will make it kind of um, almost like vinyl. 
not quite as bendy but uh, a lot of things you can do with that and you know have some fun with it but I'm gonna be doing that layering these things up and kind of creating some little coasters with some resin paper so um, I think that I'm going to create a golden frame so I'm going to pour a golden frame in the edges of the coasters and then let that cure and then I can come back and add my paper to a clear coat on the top so we'll see how that goes So this layer uh, for one of these, I'm going to be using, this is a photocopy uh, image. So it is a professionally printed image. And then these are some letter uh, stickers, some word stickers. They are paper. Um, so I want the word sticker to be sealed um, because I don't want it to go clear. But this sheet, I do want to go Clear. It's not going to go clear, but translucent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to seal the paper over where I want to put the lettering. And then I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to put the lettering on and then I'm going to seal the lettering. Now this paper will actually go translucent because I'm not going to seal the back. Um, and the resin will soak through into the back. Um, so it will create a basically a little seal around the lettering but not on the paper. So you guys will see what happens um, once I uh, get it in the resin and once we demold, but that is the process I'm using. This is Aline's Original Tacky Glue. It is a heavy bodied white glue. You can use other glues, uh, but the less water content, the better. This is a very thick glue, as you can see. Um, so it has a lot less water content. I get a lot of questions asking, can I use uh, Elmer's glue? Can I use PVA? Can I use it? You know, answer is yes, for the most part. Um, you can use those other glues, but please do some experiments so that you know how many layers you need, etc. Don't try it on your first project to um, uh, you know, on something important. I say do some experimenting, learn your techniques, and then do something important. <laughs> so I'm just going to stick that on there, and then I'm going to stick some of these letters in there. Okay, so I'm just going to, I chose this one. It says, to the artist, everything is possible. So I'm just going to kind of cut this down a bit. Now these are some older, um, These are some older stickers, so you probably won't be able to find these anymore. Um, these were made by Cosmo Cricut. I don't think they're in business anymore. Um, so you, but you can find other uh, letter word stickers and stuff. Uh, Tim Holtz has some pretty cool ones uh, in black and white. And Are ready. 
just going to put a little bit more glue on top of those because I want them to remain opaque. Okay, I'm going to let that dry while the uh, resin is curing, and after it's cured, we can move on. Um, it should be about four hours or so. It's about 10 o'clock right now, so I'm going to give it, you know, a good four hours, and then we'll uh, start putting in the next layer. Okay, so it's been about four hours since I poured the um, edges of those coasters. And so I've been working on getting my art stuff together, deciding what I'm going to put into each one. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think this is going to go into the square one. And you notice I have not sealed this. This is a page from an old dictionary that was falling apart. And then this is a photocopy of some artwork printed and so that's going to layer up like that and then I've got the stamping in the corner and hopefully the stamping will come out we'll see how that goes I may need to touch it up at the end and then I have this piece for the circle and I just layered those lettering up and I did seal the lettering with glue and let it dry and we'll try that and then this one this one has a sheet of um, pattern paper, like sewing pattern paper, and then a photocopy, and this is also a photocopy, um, and then I have those same stickers, and I did not seal those, so we'll see if there's a difference, you know, at the end. And I think now I'm just ready to mix up the clear resin and start getting this poured and these items placed inside. Okay, so now that I've got this mixed, I'm just kind of letting it set for a minute, let the bubbles come up. Um, I did apply some heat gun to it just to warm it up gently because it's cold in here. And uh, we'll just keep uh, letting this uh, pop a little bit. I've got some more bubbles here on the top. So I'm going to go ahead and pop those real quick. And uh, we'll go ahead and start with this one. I'm just going to pour a certain amount. Alright, so we're just going to pour this layer, pour a thin layer in this one. I'm not going to fill it all the way up because I still have to add my papers and then I still need to um, add a little bit on top of the paper. So I don't want to get my molds too full. I'm going to heat, put some heat gun on that again.
make sure all those bubbles are popped before I put this layer, this first layer in. So I'm going to take my first image, which will be the top, but I'm flipping everything over. So we got to make sure everything goes in the right direction. So I'm going to start with one edge and I'm going to slowly, slowly curving it. I'm slowly going to push it down into the resin. You can see the resin is already soaking into it. And the reason I'm doing this slowly and curved is because I don't want to trap any bubbles underneath it. Just using my popsicle stick to push the paper down so that the resin can slowly flow over the edges. Now you can see that the paper is almost gone like a vellum look. If you know what vellum paper is, it's kind of a very trans kind of a translucent type paper almost looks like tissue paper but of course it's actual copy paper so it's stronger than that and we're just going to slowly let this you know do its thing pull over the edges seems to be doing a good job on its own just pushing down and allowing it to come over so when you're um, working with a photograph or something and you want it to continue to be opaque, that's why you have to seal it because you can see how the resin has soaked into the paper and there's just a little bit of white left. Hopefully you can see that. You can see there's just a little bit of white left here and there and that's where the resin is still trying to soak through that um, professional print ink. And so once the resin gets to the back, it's probably going to soak through a lot better even. I'm just going tapping the paper down to the surface of the silicone just to get the excess resin out from underneath the paper otherwise it can cause it to float up and make sure that my paper is centered from side to side that looks pretty good I'm going to hit it with a little bit more heat. Bring you back up here. I'm going to place this piece in. Making sure the correct side is up.
Now, one thing about um, creating resin paper, which is basically resin soaked paper, is if you have printing on both sides, when it goes translucent, you'll be able to see the lettering from both sides of the printed paper, which can create kind of a neat effect if that's what you're going for, as long as you know that that's what's going to happen. Uh, it's a fun effect, especially for mixed media work and layering. You get that kind of stained glass kind of look. Okay. Just gonna add just a little bit more resin on top here. All right, so that's good for that one. If you can see the resin is really starting to soak in and you can see the lettering coming through from the other side as well. So when we flip this over, you kind of get that ghost effect from that lettering. Kind of looks kind of neat. Okay, so moving on to the round one, and this one's going to be a little bit more tricky because you can see the, the glue kind of caused some rippling here, and I don't want any air bubbles to get trapped in that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of resin preemptively on the front here before I flip it over, and that will fill in pre-fill in all of those little gaps so that I don't trap any air bubbles inside. Okay, there's that. Pour some of this resin. add this piece of paper that has actually there's an air bubble on it so I'm going to hit it with a little heat first because I don't want to trap any heat any air bubbles in there all right we are ready now You can see where I had glue on the front and where I didn't is starting to soak in. This is what would happen to your photos and stuff if you tried to put them into resin without sealing them.
So from the back, now you can see, because I didn't seal the back, it can still penetrate to the front, even though the front has glue on it. It can still penetrate this paper and make it uh, translucent because the back is not sealed as well. So I'm going to pour a little bit more on that one. Okay, hit it with a little heat to pop any bubbles. We'll move on to the next one over here. Alright. Now this one, when I flip it over, I've got my lettering stuck to this paper, so I have to be careful when I put this stuff in there, that I put them in the right positions. So kind of over a little. And when I flip this in, it's going to be just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. Now this one I'm gonna make pretty thin because that is such a thin piece of paper. Actually, I'm thinking of that wrong. I've got to put my little pieces in first. some heat. Moving on. When you do this, the paper has a tendency to try to float, um, but as you get it saturated with the resin, as you can't see any more of the white in the paper, um, there's less 
uh, air in the paper so it will be less likely to float. That's why you got to keep tapping down the edges as you go. Get my little butterfly in here. Okay, now I'm ready for this next sheet. I've got to make sure that I get my lettering on the right side. Okay, so it's the next morning and everything seems pretty cured. It's not not uh, sticky or anything. So I think we're just going to go ahead and get into this demolding. I, uh, I honestly don't see any bubbles or anything, but I did take precautions to warm the resin up and um, use the heat gun to pop any bubbles, etc. Um, if you're looking for these molds, um, I bought them at Michael's, but you can get the same set on Amazon and they are in the description or in the resin links in the description box below. So you can find those pretty easy. Ooh, so pretty. I like it. I really like it. See, that didn't turn out too bad. It just adds a little extra element there. You see, can see what I mean by, um... You know the the resin soaks into the paper and makes it translucent so you can see I mean it's not completely clear but it is translucent so even the rose sheet so that's two layers but you can see how it makes you see the the, the printing on the front and the printing on the back of the paper which kind of gives it a nice little effect so I like that that's pretty neat very cool. Oh, that one, that one turned out pretty nice. Let's try this one. Well, this one just had the thin sheet of um, pattern paper in the background. So it's probably just going to make it a little bit of a frosted effect. Yeah, you see that has the pattern paper in it and it's almost nothing so you can kind of see it gives it a tiny bit of pattern but there's not um, it just basically makes it see-through but just a little bit of a tint so you can see you know the difference between the white and the tinted so that's kind of pretty I like that one too I really like that one cute oh, so we'll check out the next one 
hoping this one turned out because this is going to be my favorite, I think. Okay. Yes, I like this one. You see how it's kind of see-through? That's so pretty. Now, you could use these as coasters, but if you do something like this, you could hang it on the window and just have the light coming through it, and that would be really pretty as well. So you see how the the glue kept the words from, you know, being soaked into, but it the resin still soaked in from the back, so it still made it nice and uh, um, translucent. Whereas on this one, I don't know if you can see it, it actually kind of made a neat effect. So these stickers were thick enough that it didn't really soak all the way into it. But if you can kind of see on the edge, there's a little bit of a line around the edge of the sticker. And that is where the resin soaked in from the sides, which with this technique, with for the aged technique it kind of makes it look like those letters are, or those words are aged so it kind of worked out so I might use that again um, but if you're wanting something that is crisp and clean I would definitely seal um, your stickers with some glue before you pour your resin so I really like how those all turned out I am pretty impressed with this resin it's a good quality resin um, this is the Again, this is the Maker Epoxy from, by Just Crow, and it's from Total Boat. You can find it on their website at totalboat.com. And, uh, yes, they, they sent me these um, products for free to try, but uh, my opinions are my own. It does seem to be pretty comparable to um, Amazing Clear Cast, but... I think the odor is lower on this one. Um, it's definitely not as strong as Amazing Clearcast. Amazing Clearcast is not very strong either, but this one is um, a little bit less scented, <laughs> less stinky, I guess you might say. Um, yeah, the odors are almost non-existent with this one. So, um, yeah, I uh, I really like how these turned out. I'm pretty happy with them. So if you are looking for some different techniques and different things to use in your resin, try some translucent layers. You can, you know, I use kind of an aged vintage feel for these, but you could use this with any kind of, you know, colorful, modern, anything like that. Um, so try that out. Try your layering with your paper and create some resin paper. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye! Thank you.